Hi, my name is Paul Juniper and I'm the head of boarding here at Beads and I'd like to welcome you to our boarding breakout session today. Uh, we're just going to start the session by introducing ourselves. So as I said, my name is Paul Juniper. Um, I've been here for 12 and a half years and I've been working in boarding for 10 of those years. I was previously a housemaster of an all boys house, uh, dorms house. And um, now I have the pleasure of looking after the whole boarding community here at Beads. Um, with us today, we also have uh, Dr. Suzanne Lewis, who's a house mistress. We've got Lydia Casaretto and Jaden Eben, who are both senior boarders here at the school, who've been here right the way through and have done many years between them. Okay, so I'm going to start by handing over to Dr. Lewis, who will tell, tell you a little bit about herself. Thank you. Um, so I'm Suzanne Lewis. Um, as um, Paul Juniper said, I, I'm house mistress in one of the girls' boarding houses. I'm house mistress of Daughter House. Um, I've been at Beads for five years now, um, and I've been house mistress for one of those years. Before that, I was a deputy in another one of our girls' houses, um, and I started off as a tutor in a boys' boarding house, um, Cambo. Um, love being house mistress. Um, it's the, the best job ever. Um, yeah. It's a, and it's a really, really lovely house to be house mistress of. Um, I'd like to hand over to Lydia now to tell you a little bit about herself. Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a full boarder from Italy and I currently am in Crossways. Currently last year, which is very exciting, I came here in pre-six, so it's been three years since I've been at the school. Um, I'm currently studying Italian animal management and geography and art. And yeah, do you know it? Uh, I'll pass it on to Jaden. Thank you, Lydia. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jaden Evan. I'm a four border, as like Lydia. Um, I'm from an island, small island called Bermuda, in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, I'm currently in my last year as well. I joined in lower fifth, so I've been here for four years. Um, the subjects I have been studying is double P tax board and business. So yeah, back to you, sir. Brilliant stuff. Okay, thanks very much. Right, I've got a list of questions here that are commonly asked questions by parents, and um, I'm going to put them to the panel. I might even have a go at answering one or two of them myself as we go along. Um, the first one on the list um, is, what are the main benefits of boarding? And that's obviously something that I feel really passionate about, because I think that the, the most important thing about boarding is the boarding house. And the boarding house is not just somewhere where you come to sleep. The house is about the centrality of the development of the child. This is the place where your housemaster or housemistress is going to be keeping a very close eye on you, where your tutor is going to be based. This is the place where there are matrons who care about you. And this is a place where you've got lots of friends who you're going to make lifelong friendships with. So the actual boarding house, much more important than just a place to sleep. We're really lucky here because we've got some fantastic state-of-the-art facilities. So daughter house that I'm sat in now, um, this is an absolutely beautiful building with a large central atrium. It's got lots of nice areas for, for socializing, a lovely garden outside where you can go outside and play games in summer. Um, and then there, there's a, a large common room area here with lots of sofas and things, table tennis um, and, and other activities, a house kitchen. Um, matron's room and the house mistress's office plus all of the bedrooms as well and when you get all of that facility filled with people you start to build a real community and I think that the community and the actual education of the whole person where you're learning to cook you're learning to make friends you're learning to get along with people from all over the world from all walks of life is really one of the, the great strengths of boarding. Um, Dr Lewis what do, what do you think uh, are some of the strengths of boarding for you? Um, well, I, I couldn't agree more with what you said about the sense of community that you get with boarding. Um, for me, um, the, the boarding house that, that you belong to is your family while you're at school, you know, for however many years um, you're, you're with us, those three or five years, um, we are your family. Um, and it genuinely has that, that feel to it um, with people across the years, you know, looking out for each other. Um, including the, the, the staff and the matron team as well. So it's that sense of community, a sense of very strong sense of family belonging. Um, but also it's, it's kind of a bit like a, a mini university experience because um, you've got that whole wealth of different cultures being together as well um, and people, you know, different people that you maybe wouldn't normally meet. And so it's, there's a real richness um, and diversity in the whole environment as well, which is so valuable um, and really, I think, helps to produce 
um, independent young people of who've just got so a little bit more to them. They've just got a you know so much you know more that they more of an experience to to draw on that they maybe have missed out on if they if they haven't been brought in. Thank you very much indeed for that. That's that's really insightful actually. Um, Jaden, can I ask you, could you just run through a typical school day for a boarder and tell us a little bit about what your day would be like over in Campbellot House? Um, what a day in Campbell would be like was we well, first of all, you get woken up in the morning, obviously. Um, but after you woken up, get like a shower, or whatever, you go down for registration. And then after registration, you go on for breakfast. Then after breakfast, you have your first two lessons. Then it'll be a short break between 10 30 and 11 and then after that there's another two lessons before lunch and then depending on the day you rather have activities or you have afternoon lessons but rather after the after if you rather have afternoon lessons or activities after that you go straight back to house for another registration and then you go on to prep and most houses in the school will do first and second prep but in between those two prep sessions you'll have dinner but other than that that's how a normal, typical day of a border, border runs for. But yeah. Brilliant stuff. Um, in terms of prep, it's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Because um, I think that you probably have a traffic light system in your house, the same as, as we do over in dorms, where people um, with their effort grades will get different levels of supervision, if you like. And the whole idea is about support and building independence. So... Um, I think it works that if you've got very good effort grades, then you'll, you can be pretty um, flexible about when you do your prep. And unfortunately for those who maybe need a little bit more help, they have compulsory prep. But yeah. it's more about a supportive environment, isn't it, rather than sitting people down and just making them do something. Yeah, um, I agree with you. How it works in Cambo is that it... I don't want to bait anyone up, but what they do is... We have, if anyone's effort grades is below, the average is below a three, then you sit, they make sure you sit around like supervised by someone, rather it's the house prefects or the teachers downstairs in like the common areas and you do your prep. So no phones are allowed. You just crack on with your prep for first and second prep. But I, but I completely agree with you with that. They're just doing it so it benefits you for your education because the, they're trying to get you to get on the right path instead of just slacking off and doing whatever. They just want you to do well in classes. So yeah, I completely agree with you, sir. Thank you very much indeed, Jaden. Um, Lydia, could you tell us a little bit about what happens from Friday through to Sunday over the weekend? Yeah, okay. So usually Friday finishes, best feeling ever when school finishes, sorry to say. But um, yeah, once we finish, we have a short amount of break where we can go to a place called the village shop, which is a little shop nearby school. You can get snacks and drinks and stuff and smoothies, which is really nice. And then we usually have roll call to see if everyone's in the house and everyone's there. Then after we'll have dinner, which is just normal dinner. It's early, but it's, I like it early. It's nice like that. And then we go back to house for an activity. Usually we would, you could do any activity from like the gym from maybe even some other extra lessons you want to catch up or even the house usually organizes an event um this year our house has organized a lot of events we had a girls night in which was so successful it was so much fun we also have a lot of movie nights which is nice because it's just like a way to calm down and chill after like a long week and then after it's bedtime and then comes saturday then Saturday, we, we wake up a little later. We wake up around 10, I remember. I think I remember, yeah, it's around 10-ish. Then we have breakfast in-house, which is amazing. I love it. I just get to go down in my pajamas. And then after, we have activity time again. But this is really important because there's so many activities school offers. It could be from sports to also academics. And we also have usually some buses. Currently, because of COVID and because of, like, um, not wanting to have any infections and stuff. We decided that the buses wouldn't go out for now, but we still do have like a range of activities. And as I was saying before, for the academics, if any of the students feel like they're behind their work or currently need some extra times with teachers or just generally want to do some private studying, there's always that offer. And then after activity time, we have 
pretty much the free day. We also do offer other activities throughout the house, which is again, maybe a movie night or maybe something with both of the houses. Like this term, we had a little sport event with studded and crossways. We did, I think it was baseball. I might be wrong. I, I'm pretty sure it was baseball. It was really fun because we got like interactive with all the students and all the different houses, well, the two different houses. And then after, after that, we have free time, then it's time to go to bed. And then it's Sunday. Sunday, we have the latest breakfast. Well, we have brunch at 11-ish, I think, I remember right. And then Sunday is pretty much rest day. We do have a very big bus, which would bring us usually to Brighton or to London, which is really nice. And yeah, and then after that, you just have a free day. That's pretty much it. Fantastic. Thanks for running through all of that. I mean, it sounds like an action-packed weekend. There's loads of stuff going on. I think that's a really important point to make. So thank you very much indeed for running through all the different activities and things. Um, one of the things that we really do try to provide here is variety. And we try to find something that everybody's good at. And quite often, we can do that through the activities program. So as Jaden mentioned in the week, we've got three days with activities running. And then at the weekends, we've got lots of very bespoke and unusual, quirky little activities taking place with everything from a sixth form bar and pizza night for the, for the older pupils, right the way through to trips to the local zoo, or maybe just going into Lewis, one of the, the nice towns nearby for a coffee. So all, all different manner of activities going on. It has been quite strange in these COVID times that we've not been able to, to go out quite as much as, as we normally would. But, but interestingly, I think that that's kind of brought us together as a community. And we've come up with quite interesting online activities that we can do on a Saturday night. There have been dance-offs and um, there, there have been a pub quiz type activities and things like that that the houses have really got behind. And, um, it's been great to see people getting very inventive during these strange times. Right, okay, let's have a look and see what's the next list. Um, question on the list, sorry. So, what happens if my child is ill? Which, um, of course, if you're if you're just 20 miles away or, or 5,000 miles away, any parent would really worry if their child was feeling ill and they're away from home. So, Dr. Lewis, what kind of things are in place in order to look after a child that's not feeling 100% here in the Beans? Thank you. Thank um, you. But we're very, very well equipped to look after um, the children when they're not very well. Firstly, in-house, we have um, matrons in-house um, who are um, all qualified to look after um, children. They dispense medicine. Um, they'd be them, them and the house mistress and the house staff will be the first port of call for a child who's unwell. Come and let us know. 99% of the time, matron can help them um, and we can help them make, make them feel better. Um, and of course, we'll always keep parents informed as well um, and let you know, you know what's going on with your child if they have been feeling poorly. Um, if that's in the middle of the night, that still happens. They come and they, you know, they ring a doorbell, um, usually of the, the house mistress or the house master. Um, but there are two other doorbells they can ring as well for other resident staff. And we'll come and help you. Or, sorry, we'll come and help your child. Um, and it doesn't just fall down to us. We have qualified nurses um, and matrons that are on call throughout the night. Um, so, you know, if it's something really simple, um, we can get it for them. But then we will always check um, with the, the um, member of the health and wellbeing team that's on duty and see if they need any further help. Um, and if they've been if they've been sick in the night, um, obviously, we won't leave them in the room um, with other people. Um, we'll either isolate them in the house and make sure they're looked after um, in, in, a, in their own room, but we'll also always get the health and wellbeing team involved. And sometimes that might mean that they actually move up to um, the health and wellbeing centre and are looked after by one of our nurses there. Um, we also have a link with a local GP surgery. Um, and right from day one, um, when your child um, joins us, they're registered with that GP surgery. And so we have a doctor that they can see any time and she comes to the school a couple of times a week and we have appointments there. We can also um, get them to the GP surgery, which is not very far away, just down the road in Helsham. Um, during COVID, um, obviously, we've, you know, we've, we've made a little bit more um, use of the expertise of our health and wellbeing team, you know, the, with um, COVID testing, um, advice, um, they've, they've been absolutely invaluable. Um, so, you know, I, I think we all um, just really, really appreciate um, what a great team we have got here and all the hard work that they go to. So 
so yeah I mean as a parent myself who's who's here we're, we're children are extremely well looked after um, for their, their health as well as everything else we also have two um school counsellors so you know their mental health um is well cared for as well um and we can um make bookings with with those if um, they need to speak to a counsellor as well Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it certainly sounds like we're very well equipped and we are. So um, over in the Health and Wellbeing Centre, as Dr. Lewis says, we have fully qualified nursing team over there. Um, and we also have a separate facility, Fairfield House, um, where in the current situation with um, COVID, we can actually isolate people who have symptoms, get them tested rapidly, make sure that they're not positive and then get them back into the boarding community where they should be, hopefully if they're they're not positive so far we've been very fortunate in that we've we've managed covid very well um because we've got very high biosecurity standards and we've been quarantining people properly as they're coming back into boarding um and of course we're, we're really ke keen on on keeping everything clean we've increased the our cleaning regimes um we've, we've got hand sanitizer everywhere all those sorts of things and it's been very very successful but should we have um a covid case we do have the facilities here in fairfield house where somebody could go and isolate and be looked after by the health and wellbeing team away from the boarding house if that was necessary, um, which is um, extraordinary, really. We're very lucky to have that. Um, going on to, to more positive things than COVID, although, as I said earlier, bizarrely, it's kind of brought us together as a community here and, and, and we still uh, feel very, very close across all five of the boarding houses. Um, I'd like to know about your highlights, really. And I, I think that I'm going to go to Dr. Lewis last because I'm sure that you've got some highlights too. Um, but Jaden, what are your highlights of, of boarding over the last few years here um, in Campbell? Um, it's too much, too much to actually take, like think about. But like I've, I've come up with a few that I think will actually always be on my mind, even when I leave Beats and when I like, become an adult. Um, one of them is... Cambo Silent Disco. So that that is will forever be in my mind. Um, basically, what happens is every every house in the school has a charity week, and Cambo's charity week, I think, I believe, is the first week in December, and I believe it's the Silent Disco is held on a Tuesday. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what a Silent Disco is, but um, our, my first Silent Disco, I believe, has to be hands down the best because. I've never seen like everyone in the school just come together in one house and just enjoy I, like all the music that was playing. And it was just, it was good. It was good vibes everywhere. And it's just, that will always, that will always be a highlight for me because, and also the next morning, kid you not, I lost my voice. So I know I had a, I had a great time because I couldn't, couldn't speak the next day. <laughs> um, another highlight for me at Beats is, I would say, uh, I have to say, before it all went down, um, was the, Lydia will agree with me on this one, um, our socials. Our socials were, you know, back in the day, they were good. My first social was the Halloween social, I believe. Mm -hmm. Everyone came dressed up, looking scary, looking whatever. And it was just, everyone just had a good time. And it just, it just made everyone, it just made me realize that, like, we, if we do this more often, everyone will have a good time. And that was just, that was just epic to me. And yeah, that was like my highlight of beats, but Sil Cambo Silent Disco was my top. And then obviously school social is after that. But yeah, those are my highlights. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, Lydia, what about you? What, what are the highlights for you in boarding over the last few years? So, like Jaden, of course, the socials were so exciting, mainly because it was a time to like also interact with other students mm -hmm. and from other houses and also like the day boarders and the boarders, which was really nice. But another thing that really stayed with me forever, like I think it's going to stay for me forever for now, is a 24 hour disco, which Crossways always offer each year. Um, so this is pretty much what it says. It's 24 hours. We go from 4 p.m. until the next day at 4 p.m. It starts at Friday and then we end up at Saturday. This is also a charity event, which is just fun. And it's, it's so much fun because we get the best food. We get brownies, hot chocolate. We get hot dogs. It's just one of those good events. And then also it's just a great time to bond with the entire house. Everyone's just dancing. I mean, what's better than that? 
And then the last event, which I always remember, is sports day. It's just really fun because everyone's just in like a high spirit. It's at the end of the year. So everyone's so excited for like the summer break and it's just a great time and so warm and everyone's outside. So, yeah. Brilliant stuff. It's, you, you're definitely going to leave here with fond memories, you two, that's for sure. And, um, you know, every year when I'm talking to my upper sixth, when they're at the Leavers Ball, they, they, they all have stories like this of things that, that they're, they're going to remember um, going forward. Um, Dr. Lewis, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit now because right now is Daughter House Charity Week and um, both Jaden and Lydia have mentioned charity events there. Um, you've had all kinds of charitable events going on, even in lockdown. Would you mind telling us a little bit about what you've been doing in Daughter? Sure. Um, so we, it was quite challenging to think of something we could do for our charity week, which is this week, um, that was online. Um, and across the school, we've already had um, an exercise competition um, during um, lockdown where people were doing exercise and logging their kilometres and it was an inter-house competition. So we kind of thought, well, we can't really do something that's that similar. So we, we, um, we had a house meeting and the girls came up with this brilliant idea. Um, we weren't sure if it would take off, but it really has. Um, so we set up a Just Giving page for our house charity, which is the Royal Marsden. Um, it's the, um, the hospital that helps um, with special treatment for cancer patients. Mm -hmm. um, and we had set ourselves targets, 50 pound targets, so that every 50 pounds, um, someone in the house or the whole house um, does a challenge. So the first 50 pounds, I had to be gaffer taped to a wall, um, which my sons helped with. Um, and then at 100 pounds, our first years had a cream pie in their face. At 150 pounds, um, the prefects made face masks out of contents of their kitchen cupboards, and that there are a whole range of things, prefect ice bucket challenge, six formers dye in their hair, pink, blue or purple. Tomorrow I have to teach in my pajamas along with the other tutors. Um, we've all had to do 50 press ups each, we've done a house TikTok, um, and we exceeded our target, which was originally 500 pounds. Currently we've raised 1,287 pounds. Um, and as we've doubled our target, it means that and when we come back after half term, we're all going to be purple for a day. We'll have purple faces, purple hair. Um, so, so yeah, and, and I, I think for me, it's, it's that it's whenever the house comes together um, and kind of surprises me a little bit, maybe, and thinks of something new um, that I haven't thought of and then, and then works together and makes it happen. That, that's one of the, you know, the best things about, about the boarding community. Um, yeah, seeing them run with their ideas and do strange and unusual things. You never have a day or a week um, that is dull or the same. So, and even yeah. in I think that pretty much sums up boarding at Beads. Um, you know, whether it's a charitable event, whether it's the social, um, even just a weekend in the boarding house, there's always something going on, and it's always it brings people together. That's the wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank all of the members of the panel for, for joining us today and for your insights. It's been really interesting. So thank you all very much for coming along. Um, and for those of you who are watching, um, hopefully um, you decide to join us in the future and we can welcome you to one of our boarding houses. Um, it would be our pleasure to have you come and board with us in the future. Um, thank you all very much indeed. Cheerio.